Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity for every one of us to come this morning and worship you. Thank you for the opportunity for the minds and the hearts of your people here in the temple that they still remember your fourth commandment from the beginning. It is the everlasting covenant of to worship you forever. We invite you, Holy Spirit, now in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go to the book of Revelation, I would like to start because when I became a Bible believer through the teaching, biblical teaching of the Seventh-day Adventist, I love this text since 1999 until this morning. Second Peter chapter 1. I always, when I go to the prophecy, I always go to this text because this is where we begin study the prophecy. Amen? Amen. And if you have your Bible, I invite you to open your Bible. In that way, you will not fall asleep while we are preaching, while we are discussing and sharing the blessing. Amen? Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And if you there, say amen. 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 And the Bible says... Also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto he do well that he take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Amen. When my first time I heard this verse, it was amazing. It motivated my spiritual walk with Christ. When it comes to the prophecy, oh, Never forget, it's always in my frontal lobe, this special text. Let me go to another text. Before God of Israel from the beginning. This is way from the beginning, from the Garden of Eden. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. These are the, the texts of the, when you study the prophecy, these are the texts. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. If you dare say amen. Amos. Amos. Chapter 3, verse 7. And the Bible says, the Bible says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Amen. All the way from the beginning, from Moses to John in the islands of Patmos. Amen. All the way. God never do anything to this world, but he always share his will Two prophets. Amen? The prophet that's obey, obey God. The title of our sermon this morning, it is the blessing of the book of Revelation to God's people that they know God. Amen. The blessing from the book of Revelation to God's people that they know God. Amen? Now, Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says, And I look... And lo, a lamb stood on the mount of Zion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. I'm sure you heard a lot of sermons about this chapter. But we still, it is a blessing. Amen? It is the blessing. Well, let me go back. The Holy Spirit reminds me, Revelation chapter 1, verse 3, the blessings. Because sometimes you forget about oh, the blessing of study the prophecy. Revelation chapter 1, and Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. And if you dare say amen. amen. That's why it motivates me, I'm telling you. Without this blessing of the word of God, I will not do nothing about worshiping God. But these are the words that motivated my spiritual walk with Christ every day. How about you? What makes motivated you? By this. Reading of the Word of God, because your faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Amen? It's biblical. And the Bible says, verse chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. It is a blessing to continue on studying. Even if you hear from our preachers, pastors preaching this, you individuals. Don't depend on me. Don't depend on Pastor Garcia and so forth. 
You study the prophecy. You study the Bible on your own so you can be motivated by the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts. And the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from where? From the earth, this earth. This is where you sit right now. I'm standing right here. This earth. Amen. Verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women. For they are virgins. For they are what? Virgins. These are the, talking about spiritual. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Verse 5. And in their mouth was found no kyle, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Very small sermon, one up to five. So please stay awake. Consider this. Always consider this. We must consider what we read, what we just hear from the blessing of the book of Revelation. Consider this. I'm speaking to you in a different language. In your language, consider this. Amen. In their foreheads, in their forehead, that's what the Bible says, verse 1, 2, and 3, all up to 5. In their foreheads. Revelation chapter 13 has presented. Oh. Revelation 13 has presented. I want you, for those who love to study these chapters, I want you to turn your video back to what you just read it and study from these chapters. It's wonderful. It's amazing how Satan deceiving the whole world. Revelation 13 has presented the triumvirate of evil made up of the dragon. You know the dragon. Sea beast of Revelation 13 and the land beast of Revelation 13 as well as the steps they will take in deceiving the whole world. By contrast, in chapter 14, John shows God's people and the message they are to proclaim to the world in the preparation for his what? For his return. Yes, praise the Lord. Oh, I love you guys. The Father's name in their foreheads. The Father's name in their foreheads. What it means is the seal of his authority and ownership. You know, I know most of you, you're always thinking about God every day. Amen? You always, you go to your car, your mind is connected. That's what this scripture is all about. Even if there are so many things coming to you, disturb your mind, and you still love Jesus, your mind is still connected to the Father and Jesus Christ, and plus, the Holy Spirit is your great friend and your great helper. Amen? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, Watch this. This is very important. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are His, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. Amen. This is a sign. Somebody say that during the Sabbath school. It is everlasting sign of God's people on earth, not just people of Israel from the beginning, but everyone that believe and accept Jesus Christ. It is everlasting covenant. Ooh, I love that subject. The, the everlasting covenant, which is based on the 10 words, which is Exodus chapter 20 until the end. This is a sign or seal indicating that they belong to the Lord. Revelation chapter 7. I want you to turn your, your video back, how you study Revelation chapter 7. Also tells us that the seal of God is placed in the forehead, your frontal lobe, your mind. It does not just like the way that Israelites carry the Ten Commandments before. But nowadays, your Bible tells you that he will put my law into your what? into your heart, into your mind, so you will not carry outside. You just carry in your mind. It's a spiritual law of God, everlasting law of God. Amen? Verse 3 says, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees. Still we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. See? 
when we walk here on earth, you're keeping the Sabbath every day. You are faithful, and thank you so much for coming. And that's a sign that you, you are faithful to your God. You are faithful to Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus cost him. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and you read the whole chapter. Amen. A seal was fixed to a document to show who was issuing it, by what authority, and who was affected by it. What is this seal? Isaiah, the spirit prophecy, prophet Isaiah, verse 16, bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Are you disciples of Jesus? Yes. You should be, yes. Because you believe in the law and a what? And the testimony. Those are the significant sign of God's people at the end of time. All the way from the beginning, from Moses to the end, to the very last person here on earth. Amen? Man, I love those texts when I became a Bible believer. The Bible says, uh, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Let me tell you this. Of all the commandments in God's Ten Commandments, only, that's what we're talking about this morning during the Sabbath school, only the fourth has the elements of a seal. For those in the military, they know what I'm talking about, the elements of the seal. We have the seal you know what? If you have a passport of this country, you are, this is the most significant. When I received my passport, first time I received my United States government passport, whoo, I received a million dollars. I tell you, I go tell everyone. I go tell everyone because when people of the world fulfill the prophecy, the whole world is, look up, they're coming here. But there's another news for them. But thank, I'll just thank the government of the United States. They allowed me to do my paperwork here, and they said, you are the citizen. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. But we have a, another most significant citizen, which is what? This seal, the seal of God. Because this world will be gone. And what's next? Heaven and earth. Jesus will come back and take you home. Amen? So we must do the preparation. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, verse 11. Remember the Sabbath day. I want you to read together and memorize together. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day, not the first day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Crystal clear. If we all went to school, and I don't know why people are so confusing, it's very clear here in your language, in my language, very crystal clear, no debating, no argument. Amen? That's the seal of God. They have all elements of God's seal. The Lord himself said that the fourth commandment was to be signed forever, signed or seal. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Spirit of prophecy says, prophet Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Their father's name, right? Their father's name has been written in their foreheads. Right there. You know, for those years that you didn't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, once you have that person, you always think about that person, right? Same thing with your God. Because you know there's nobody above him. He is the only one. You're always thinking about him. Thank him for everything. Look at six days shall thou labor. Six days you do everything that you wanted. But on the seventh day, very specific between you and your God. He wants us to rest. He wants us to come to him and worship him because he is our provider. He is our creator. They have overcome and have become like him in character. Amen. Father's name in their forehead. Forehead or mwaulu, 
It contains, contains that part of the brain that does the thinking and decision making. It is that part of the brain which decisions are made in order for action to be placed, to be taken. This is where the stamp of the Father's name is placed. Placed in your what? In your forehead. Amen? Amen. Revelation chapter 14, verse 2. Just, just follow up what the scripture says. The voice of many waters. What did I just say? The voice of many waters. It's amazing. What it means. What it means. The Bible says, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, reveals that the water are the... Bible students, the water symbolize of people. Woo, praise the Lord. People, the voice of many waters. Listen to that. Have we learned something? The voice of many waters. Revelation 15 reveals the water are people. Thus the prophet hears the voice of humanity. Thus the prophets, prophet hears the voice of humanity. Christ's voice in the voice of many people. That's amazing. Why are we not uh, equal with all same voice? Why? That's amazing. Did you ever think about that? Why are we all different voices? Instead of just one voice, John, James, Susan, they're all same voice. But that's amazing about God. How many people on earth now? Many, many, right? But they are all different voices. What's this? Christ's voice in the voice of many people. Christ's voice in what? In many people. This is amazing. When Christ speaks in our behalf, the Father hears our voice. When you, all of us, you accept Christ daily, when Christ speaks on our behalf, not just you, not just me, He represents every voice of God that He accepts Christ here on earth. That's amazing about God. Amen? When Christ speaks in our behalf, the Father hears our voice because there's nobody between God and us. It's Jesus. Remember John uh, chapter 17? He was, he was talking to his father for, for his people here on earth. He said, I don't want to take them out from the world. I want to keep, here, keep them here on earth. But he asked father to protect them. Amen. But while he was talking to his father about those people, God the father hears the voices of those believers. Same thing with you. Did you learn something? I just learned things. Well, I'm just look at these verses. Amen. He is the spokesman for humanity. He is the one. So when he's talking about his father between, father, between him and his father, your voices, the father hears you and me. Amen? Praise the Lord. I praise God for that. Revelation chapter 14, verse 2. The voice of hubbers. The voice of, of what? Hubbers. The Bible mentions the use of harps and trumpets by people to sound in worship or praise or to a victory or a special occasion. The year of tribulation was the time when every debt was canceled and everyone in bondage was released. Ooh, is that good news? In essence, we have the removal of the depths of sin and guilt with liberty for sin's captives. Man, this is powerful. As Christ speaks for humanity, there is a response. Uh, here's the question. What will be that response? Your Bible answer that. The voice of great thunder by the Father. How you praise Him. How you praise the Father. How you praise the Father. This is totally different from the way you praise the people. He is the God of what? The thunder. 
Remember chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, verse 20. The people of Israel, they were afraid of thunders. That is the definition of God, the Father. The response, there is a response. What will be that response? The voice of great thunder. Nobody can give thunder <laughs> except your mighty God, the God of lightnings. Woo, that's how you praise Him. The God of the fire. Amen. We shall have many amens. And I believe what the definition here that it's in the Bible. Book of Daniel is talking about the God of fire, the God of thunders. Amen? The voice of hoppers is continue on. Revelation chapter 14, verse 3. Redeem from the earth or the new song. Verse 3 from that uh, 14, verse 3. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but a hundred and forty and four thousand. Praise the Lord. Who are these people? These are the people which were redeemed from where? From this earth. It is talking about you. That is our blessed hope. That's why we are just waiting for that time when Jesus comes. He promised to us, I will come back again. No secret rapture. All of a sudden, you disappear, you disappear. That's a false, false teaching. Amen? So the more we study the Word, the more we study the book of Revelation, Satan will not deceive you and me. This settled the question of where these 144,000 come from. They are redeemed from the earth. That's the answer. And are a special group because they have had an experience in their walk with Jesus that enables them to learn a song no one else can learn. Praise the Lord. They are a testimony to the universe of what the grace of God can do. Amen. This is the grace of God that God shows to the people of Israel before he brought them out from the Egypt. Amen. Verse 4, not defiled with women. These are they which, are, which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. They are they which, these are they which follow the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Being the what? First fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Two different women. In prophecy, God uses the symbol of a woman to represent a church. To represent you. All of us individuals here, you are the church. Not the Falisa. Not this building. You and me are the churches. Amen. And I love the definition from Jesus Christ alone. Amen. So come more often. Study the word during the week because you are the church, not this building. But praise the Lord that we have the building that all the members of God's people, all the members of God's churches everywhere on Sabbath, we all combine together and return our worship and our thanks to our Creator. Amen? In prophecy, God uses the symbol of a woman to represent a church. Husband, the Bible says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church, which is you, and gave himself for her. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning, this is what Paul says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church, between Christ and you. Amen. God is good. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 32. I know you know those scriptures, praise the Lord. In Revelation chapter 12, pictures God's followers. Remember chapter 12? Prophecy students, remember chapter 12? The woman and the, the moon and the stars. Amen. We're talking about prophecy right now. The blessings. 
Revelation 12 pictures God's followers as a good woman, whereas in Revelation 17, there's a bad woman riding on a beast, which stands for a corrupt church in control of a civil power. This statement is telling us that these followers of Christ have not permitted a corrupt church to lead them astray from God's word. Amen? There are many and millions of God's people in those churches. But God wants them to come out. The Gospel of John chapter 10, Jesus said, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them. Amen? So that is our duty, your duty and my duty. Just share the, the good news from the book of Revelation to them. Amen? Verse 4, a wild tau poilato, for they are virgins. What does it mean? They have not committed adultery. What does it mean? I know you're just thinking one, one minute. <laughs> We're not talking about spiritual. What does it mean? Listen carefully. By adulterating the word of God, by teaching something that is not pure, clean, and undefected gospel of Jesus Christ. You see what? There are so many people that they are sincere, but they are adulterating the word of God. They compromise the word of God. Amen? Verse 4 continue. <coughs> These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. What does it mean? They are living proof that the grace of God can change the sinful, defiled, and corrupt human heart to the point where they can stand before their Redeemer, pure and clean. Amen? Praise the Lord. Verse 4, continue on. These were redeemed from among men. What do you mean? Glory, hallelujah, is all earth of sin and death. They are a witness before the universe that the power of the gospel work in the transformation of the character of men. Amen? That's the only thing that you wait for. Because Jesus does not just take anybody back to heaven until you have that character of Christ. Remember? We must be perfect and plus the help of the Holy Spirit in us to transform our sinful life back to Jesus Christ. Amen? Verse 4 again. Being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. What it does mean. The great wheat harvest of the ages is taking place. And 144,000 are the first fruits. Not in numbers. Like Jehovah Witness said, this is the only numbers. No. According to what I'm studying, what I read, no. This is a spiritual number. And 144,000 are the first fruits, not in numbers, but in quality. But in quality. You are qualified when we come and accept Christ and allow everything, put away everything, so you and me will just walk and allow the Holy Spirit to transform our lives before the end of this year before the end of the world. Amen? As the first fruits were presented among the Israelites as a wave offering to God of the best that they had, so are these from among mankind. Amen? We, cannot, we don't have to offer something that's not good, but we offer a very best to God. Amen? Which is you and me, we full surrender our sinful life to Him, and that's exactly what God wants us. Amen? So we praise and thank the Holy Spirit for His great help. Verse 5, without fault before the throne of God. Consider this. Transformed. Amen? We have to consider all these words that we just read it this morning. Transformed. Their characters have been so transformed by the grace of God and the working of the Holy Spirit that all the defilement of sin is gone. Amen. 
That's what it means right here. With our faults before the throne of God. It's a daily process. Every day we have to work. We have to allow the Holy Spirit through studying His Word and put into actions those words from the, from the Word of God to your life and my life daily. Amen? For they are without faults before the throne of God. What does it mean? All this has happened by the power of the grace of Christ. He who has begun a work. Listen to this. This is, we're almost done. Give me two minutes. He who be, has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that a wonderful blessing? Nobody else doing that. Only the Holy Spirit of God. If we, if we, <laughs> that's if right there. If we what? Surrender my own sin. You know your own problems and and all those uh, filthy things. You're the only one who knows. But if you say, Holy Spirit, help me to overcome this sin in my life. I want to be in heaven. He will love to help you. Amen. By the surrendering of your, full, of your sinful life, whatever you do, the Lord will help you with your willingness and with your full surrender. Not to look back. Walk. The Holy Spirit. Not to look back and go back and do it again. <laughs> Amen? That's the problem for us, but there's nothing harder to God. Jesus said, come to me. Matthew chapter 11. Come to me. All you have what? Carry the heavy laden. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. The Bible says, he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Not by might, nor by power, but the, my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Praise the Lord. Last one, the marriage supper. Would you like to join with me in the marriage supper? Plenty of food. But I'm talking about spiritual. I want you to turn your Bible with me. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. Last text, and we close up. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. The marriage supper. Chapter 19, verse 7. And if you dare say amen. amen. The Bible says, let us be glad and what? And rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. Amen. This is the group known, 144,000. This is a group known as 144,000 who are not defiled. They have not believed false doctrines nor misconducted themselves. They are virgins because they have kept themselves pure and true for the bridegroom. And amen. And I want to stop right there. I want to appeal to you today. The title of our sermon, it is the blessing from the book of Revelation, written by John, inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. This is everlasting blessings until Jesus comes. You don't have to, when you go to heaven, you will never read the Bible again. Amen. So do the very best. Study and read it because you're looking forward for that moment when Jesus comes. That's the end of reading the Word. You are past the examination. You are past. She said, welcome, Mr. So-and-so. Welcome to my kingdom. Thank you for your faithfulness to me. Amen? And then you look around and say, where is my wife? Where is my, my husband? But that's too bad. It's over. But we still have this moment. We still have a wonderful chances from God. Don't worry about all this. I know you worry about what's happening around the world. It's happening. I cannot stop. 
continue to pray with our president. I hope he will uh, uh, turn around. Yeah, that's a word. <laughs> Love him. I didn't vote for him, but right now I just pray for him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I look at him and say, why are you still, you should be retired for a long, long time. Let all those young people of this wonderful nation to take over the White House. Amen? Amen. But this is not the end of your hope. Heaven. You're the kingdom. Jesus said, I will come back again. Amen. Are you willing to follow the Lamb wherever He goes? We have problems. So who is the solution? Jesus. Don't carry those with you. Why? Because when you come on Sabbath, I can tell those who carry those things. <laughs> but if you just let it go during the week, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy works, including those things. When you come on Sabbath, you will be the happiest person on the face of this earth. Amen? So give all the glory to God. And I thank God for these blessings from the book of Revelation. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for these wonderful blessings, your special message to your servant John in the island of Patmos. You share with us this morning. Father, we know that we're living closer and closer, that Jesus is coming. Help us here in temple, churches, and other part of the world that are worshiping you, your God, your people that are worshiping you and your God on your Sabbath. Bless all of us here today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.